hello, hello, hello. Here we are. We are live on Get More Clients. So hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm your host, Lynn Whitbeck. Business owners and entrepreneurs hire me to ignite winning sales because most are chasing down leads, lack client retention, conversion, and profit. The mission of this show is to educate, inspire, and motivate women and men around the world to build a robust sales strategy to get more clients because many can't get more clients and haven't a clue why. And you will learn to transform thinking to the client's perspective, eliminate the lengthy chaotic sales cycle to ignite your sales and unleash lasting profits. You'll also have the opportunity to connect with me further to see how I can support you beyond today. So back in the day, there I was at a very big conference. And one of the things that I would be one of those people that would sort of hold back, I would be the person who would be standing on the fringes of the crowd or being back sort of watching the activity. Uh, if I was with someone, I might be glued to their side with wherever they went. But I wasn't the person who was out there introducing myself to people. And so at this event, we had a kickoff a session uh, for those who were new to the conference. And I got to hear Deborah Fine speak. Now, Deborah Fine, um, she just she told the story that, of course, stories are powerful, right? But it was about how she would be the one who was standing like a wallflower or glued to someone's side and how she learned the fine art of small talk so that she could connect with more people so that she could be curious, have a conversation and really effectively network. So through that event, that one session, I should say, I was so inspired because I was like, well, that's me. Well, I can change. I can do this. And for the rest of the event, which ran like four days, I did everything she talked about. I had the best event of my life. I made so many new connections. Uh, I enjoyed myself because I put myself out there because it was like I was holding back from this fear that somehow somebody wouldn't like me or that I'd be interrupting. I didn't want to be pushy. And that's all nonsense. It's human to humans. People are curious. They want to meet other people. They want to find out about them. And I wasn't participating. And I started participating. It made a huge impact for the rest of my career. So that now when I see the wallflower standing over by the wall, I go up and I ask her to join our group. And then I introduce her. I find out who she is. I introduce her and get her included in the conversation so that she doesn't feel like she's just an outlier. So I want to share this today because this is so important. Now, last week I shared how and was joined by my very special guest, RJ Verdon how to easily message in your unique voice to attract clients. So we're going to be picking up on that because this is also about how you network. And so today I'm going to be discussing networking today, how to spark, shine, and connect. Employing consistent strategies are vital for networking effectively in today's fast-paced environment. You can make memorable impressions, build meaningful connections, and leverage these relationships for personal or professional opportunities. By the end of today's show, you will know what is holding you back from networking activities, how to cultivate genuine connections and begin nascent relationships, how to give value, such as sharing ideas or providing introductions. Rather than Yet another predictable exchange of pleasantries and business information open the doors to countless opportunities. Embrace worthy intent, approaching networking with a genuine desire to understand and learn about the other person rather than self-promotion. So let's dive into this important topic today. So 
My question to you is what's holding you back from networking activities? I want you to imagine networking where every encounter with another soul isn't a battlefront for profit, but an adventure into the vast arenas of human experience and knowledge, where the purpose isn't to sell, but to connect. This is the essence of networking with worthy intent. Now, this is an important point, and I'll probably say it again. Networking should be synonymous with curiosity. Now, I want you to let that sink in and think about it. Networking should be synonymous with curiosity. So if you've been avoiding networking activities, it's probably due to your mindset and approach. First thing, ditch the pitch and embrace curiosity. If all you want to do is sell your product or service, you're not interested really in the other person except for as a purchaser, then sign up for something like selling on the spot or a similar activity where it's all about pitching your product or services because then people know what to expect and you're more likely to get some takers. When you go into a networking event and you're all you're doing is pitching, it is a huge turnoff. Networking is not about selling. It's about meeting new people, making connections and discovering new opportunities. Now, my most recent Get More Clients guests, Tom Ruich and RJ Redden, were connections I made during networking events. And those connections evolved into really, I would say, close strategic partnerships at this point. I mean, they're amazing people. I would never have met them if I hadn't attended networking events. Now, maybe it's your mindset. Now, here's the thing. You're amazing. That's what our last episodes were about, of your unique style and your unique voice and how great you are. So you want to dive into that authentic person that you are because you are amazing and people want to meet you. They want to meet the real you. All right. And that's the thing. When you really lean into that and that you're curious about other people and they're going to be curious about you and you lean into your unique, special elixir, it's a great boost to your confidence and assurance, right? And it's also important that you know how to introduce yourself. And this is something that people often stumble over. I see this happen all the time, especially in the online networking uh, events. And it just sounds like blah, 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 the same old, same old. So one of the things that I absolutely love is the intromercial. And this is by Jane M. Powers. Now, this is scientific, the way Jane has built it, but it's only 18 seconds. And it encapsulates what you uniquely do. Now, during networking events, I often only use that first sentence. I mean, you hear it at the top of my show. Business owners and entrepreneurs hire me to ignite winning sales because most are lacking client conversion, retention, and profits. So that's sort of a, a, a gist of it, but you can see it just rolls. Once you start to practice it, it's going to just come naturally. Now, as I said, I've got a couple more sentences that go with that, but all you need is that first sentence that immediately tells people what you do, who you help, who you serve you know, and that they hire you. You're, you're not a volunteer. As Jane would say, you're not a volunteer. You get paid for your services. But the key is that it sort of tells people right up front who you are, what you do. Now, this is really something that will help you when you go into networking so that you just know right off what to say, and then you can pivot to the next piece. So one of the things that I like to pivot to is I would love to know what you would like, what, if you were somewhere else, what would you do be doing? You know, where would you be? Or let me restart that. I had, I totally messed it up. So I, <laughs> I don't think I've had enough coffee this morning. So when I start, I sort of pivot to, if you could be anywhere else, where would you be? What would you be doing? 
and who would you be with? So that's a great way to open up the conversation to find out more about them, get them talking about themselves and to learn um, what's important to them, find common ground. Now, if you're at a networking event and your breakout session was on a specific topic, you could start with, how do you know RJ? You know, um, and, uh, you know, is there a story behind that? And so that could get the conversation going. So there definitely can't, it's not a, um, you know, you're going to get some information if it's about the topic, how does this topic resonate with you? You know, what's one of your, um, top tips or for best practices, or is there an area that, um, you'd like to talk about because you're struggling with it. So, or it's a challenge. So you can do, you can pivot on the dime, but the point is to take that first sentence and then pivot to the topic at hand so that you can shift the conversation away from you to them because the focus is on them. Remember, it's always about that client thinking, their perspective. And so in this case, they're not a client, but they're another human being that you want to make this connection with. So this, of course, is we've just pivoted into how to cultivate genuine connections and begin those nascent relationships. So I've got three important tips. The first one is listen more than you speak. This is true in all sales activities. And while I'm already said networking is not sales, it is a sales activity to make new connections, right? To create that spark and to create opportunities. So the insights that you gain when you listen are really valuable clues for common ground. So that example that I provided, if you could be anywhere else, where would you be? Who would you be with? And what would you be doing? Now, the great thing about that is it's gonna give you a lot of clues um, about what they, how they respond. And you're gonna be able to find common ground and you're gonna be able to, oh, that sounds really fascinating. Tell me more, you know, or wow, how often have you been there? Or do you do that every week? You know, whatever it it is, you can then add on to that to glean more information. When they're talking about themselves, you know, people always light up and they get excited about something that's important to them. And by leading with that, you're going to find out. You can also use that if it, the topic is something specific. If you're on a virtual, it can be in person or virtual, but if it's virtual um, and you have a topic that you've gone into the breakout room, you can ask them for their top tip for best practices. Or if there's a gap that they see um, that they'd like to discuss and bring that information in and then really listen and then ask more questions. Now, the other thing is that you want to look them in the eye. You wanna look in the camera if you're on a virtual, if you're in person, you're looking at them. You're not looking at your phone or around the room. You're actually looking at them because they matter. They're another human being. You're going to smile. You're going to nod. You're going to really have that open body language that you're, you know, don't go like this. No, I mean, you're ready to embrace the information that they're going to share. You want to exude enthusiasm and warmth because you want to be there. You want to learn about the other person. And as I mentioned, you want to keep that conversation going. And you can do that with leading questions such as, tell me more. How do you do that? Right? Just tag on that. And it enables you to get more information and learn more about what makes the other person tick. Now, let's talk about tip number two. Offer help before you ask for it. So karma is a very real thing, especially in business circles. And sometimes one of the things that I will do is I'll say, would you mind if I make a suggestion? Would it be okay if I make a suggestion? Now, most people are not going to say no, but you are asking for permission to give them some advice or to offer a suggestion. And so it, rather than just jump in and tell them what to do, instead, you want to make it so that they, you you just really met this person, Right. Um, you want to let them say, yeah, absolutely. You know, most people are going to say, yeah, I'd love to hear what you have to say. <laughs> I've never encountered somebody who said, no, I don't want your advice. 
I don't want to hear your suggestion. I don't want to hear your idea. And it, I mean, if it does happen, you can say, wow, okay, that sounds great. Well, what do you think is the best solution? You know, and then push it back so that they can then tell you what they think is the best solution. So um, one of the other things that I have seen a lot um, when someone will say, well, um, how can I help you? Um, uh, or you go into the breakout room and you've been instructed to tell, tell people what you need or what you're looking for. So this is a huge mistake. And I've encountered this quite a bit where I have people I've just met literally in a breakout, virtual breakout room, or even in person. And they ask for referrals. You know, what I really need is more client referrals. And I'm going, what? I just met you. I really don't know anything about you. I don't know about your business. I don't know how, um, what people have, how you've helped people. I you, literally, it's like, wow, because they've broken the cardinal rule about asking for referrals because you need to earn the right. <laughs> they've literally just jumped the shark or in this case, jumped the referral and and in fact, it's such a turnoff for me, you know, because the first thing you really need to establish is in this new relationship is a level of trust that someone wants to then continue the relationship, right? There has to be at least the beginning elements of trust so that you can carry on. So don't make that mistake. That's a huge pitfall. So tip number three is one of the things is offer up introductions that you can make. Now they're, they come in so many different forms. You know, for me, I've been on literally hundreds of podcasts as guests or on stages and shows. And if it makes sense, uh, who they, what I've gotten the sense of who they are, what they do, I can offer an introduction to a podcast host or an introduction to someone else that I think that they would like to connect with or an introduction to one of the networking communities that I belong to. So when you share introductions, um, it's a great way that you are able to give, you're able to give. And this is a really a great opportunity. Um, it's really demonstrating that you're grateful that you've made this connection with them. Um, that you have a certain level of trust that you're going to now provide them with this introduction. And it really illuminates your own reputation about who you are, that you're going to be giving value. Uh, and one of the key things here is do what you say you're going to do. You know, what I do when I'm having a networking event, um, either live or um, in person, is I immediately make a note. Um, and I might even tell them, hey, I'm going to make a note of this real quick. So I make sure I capture it. So when they see me looking down and writing something down, they know what I'm doing, right? That's that trust factor. I want them to understand that I'm making a note to remind myself to make that introduction. And then right after, as soon as I'm able, I do exactly that. Definitely the same day, unless for some reason the event is in the evening, then I do it the next day. Um, and in fact, a real quick shortcut here, have a template already made for these types of introductions. It is a super simple Word doc or a Google sheet or Google doc, and you can just copy and paste and drop in the information and off it goes. Now, my third point here is about giving value, which I just mentioned with the introductions or sharing ideas, um, providing other types of information um, that would be important to them and adding values to others. This is really about ideas over sales, okay? You're not there to sell to them. You're there to make a connection. You're there to find out more about them, to be curious and, you know, to share your level of expertise and brilliance when it's appropriate, okay? You're not there to monopolize the conversation or the spotlight's all on me. If that's what you're looking for, then uh, do guest spots, do guest podcasts, do guest shows, um, you know, because that's where you get to share your brilliance, right? So this is, you know, the real meat of it 
is you want to be that go-giver. Yeah, if you haven't heard of that book, then you definitely want to uh, check that out. Um, it's really about the art of making this introduction and connection through the networking. Because what you want to do is you want to connect. Um, it's not about collecting content uh, contacts. It's really about connecting with those people. And through that, you make new contacts that you can now nurture to the next level um, that's appropriate because are they a potential purchaser? Are they a potential partner or promoter? Um, or do they have a stage um, or platform that you can um, be on? So that's about how you want to then also do that. Um, when you're thinking about them, what are the things you can do that would help and serve them in this very beginning of this relationship? So one thing is to definitely leverage your platform. And I want you to think about that. Almost all of you have either a Facebook or a LinkedIn account, if not both. And it's super easy to do a Facebook Live or a LinkedIn Live and just have a conversation with them. That's going to provide some really valuable SEO that's going to shine on the spotlight on them. It's You're able to um, build a little bit more rapport and conversation out of that. Absolutely. Um, and this is a way that you can invite and then amplify who they are and make your own network shine as a result. Now, many of you may have other types of platforms that you can provide. You may do summits. You may have a podcast of your own or a show of your own um, or a networking event or you could bring them on as a guest speaker. Whatever that happens to be, this is a great way um, to really give them that spotlight and that limelight. You know, because when you think about it, that social capital, um, that really is a currency of worthy networking. Because what you're doing is you're giving them that gift, that gift of a platform and a gift to show their expertise um, and the gift to connect with more people. And if they are smart and they have a great lead magnet, that's something they can also provide at the end to direct people to go to when they're on your platform and you're really highlighting them. So you all have platforms. It's that simple. And you know, make sure that you make your own plan now on how are you going to connect with them further. So there's a lot of different ways that you can do that. You know, if it's appropriate at the time, uh, make sure you gather their information. I often connect with people on LinkedIn and, you know, reference the event that we both attended, um, something that they said that really resonated with me um, and that I'm really looking forward to getting to know them better. And then a second time, I may comment on one of their posts. I may, I don't go in right away and say, hey, let's connect and let's get into, a, a, you know, get set a meeting up. Not unless they've asked you to do that, you know, or it was part of the, hey, let's, you know, get on a, a Zoom together so we can find out more about each other. I don't just go in for that because it just is too sleazy and slimy. They just met you and said, I really want to establish what it's going to be like to work with me or to be a partner with me or to become um, part of my network and my platform. And it's that worthy intent. So have a plan on how you're going to nurture this nascent relationship. For some people, it's, would you like to join my email um, list? You know, we, I put out a lot of great information and you can unsubscribe at any time. You know, that's one thing that you could do. Um, would this be of interest to you? Um, I have this free lead magnet, but it's really depending on the situation. You've got to read what's going on. Um, and if it makes sense and they said, I'd love to connect with you, you can even in the private chat them if you're virtual and provide them with that Calendly link. If you're live and in person, having it as a barcode on the back of your business card so somebody can scan it and they can book right in, in that moment, it's a fantastic idea to be able to capture right then and there, but have a plan. This is all about a strategic plan. You've now made this connection. You attended this networking event. Well, what's next, right? What's next? You gotta have a plan for that. Okay, so 
As I wrap up, you know, there are several networking events that I attend on a regular basis. Um, plus, of course, I host my own events from time to time. Uh, two of the networking events that I really like are speaker connections that are hosted by Event Raptor. Um, by their um, hosts are Jenny and Steve Erickson, who own Event Raptor. And the other one is called the Leaders Networking Event, and that's hosted by Sabrina Victoria. So these are great networking opportunities. And uh, so they have a little bit different uh, places. The Speakers Connection is really about um, making those connections between people who have platforms, they're going to be running summits, or they have the need for other types of speakers, and then the speakers themselves who want to get on those platforms. So it's a great way to connect there. And uh, Sabrina Victoria is pretty darn amazing. Uh, so um, I've been on her podcast, but she has a great networking event. And it's always really topic specific, but it's great because you get into these one-on-ones where you really get to meet other people um, and connect with them. Well, thank you so much for tuning in today. You know, my purpose is for you to get more clients. Bottom line, don't make this harder than it has to be. Sales should be a win-win. And on behalf of Petite Queen, I've carved out a limited number of time slots to invite you to hop on and ignite your sales, ignite your sales call with me to see what's working, not working, and what you would love to have working. I'm going to see how I might further support you and effectively generating more leads, converting more sales, and fulfilling on your promise as a brand and organization. Just as I've been talking about for this networking topic, the fastest way to success is to assure people know that they matter. And the best way to make this happen is to build a consistent sales strategy to acquire, convert, and capitalize on every lead, such as in this networking, right? We just were talking about that, a plan to network, and then a plan for what you do afterwards to nurture that nascent connection. And when you do this, you're going to find growing your business is easy and lucrative. Today, I explored networking, how to spark, shine, and connect. And the key is for you to implement these steps to stop wasting time, energy, and resources. You have the opportunity to jump in and get the support you need for true success. Say yes to you and get on a call with me. I am really, truly gifted at this and you deserve a shortcut to your success with the right support, you can go to p2q.link forward slash win-win. And to learn more about all of our consulting programs and services, you can visit our website at petite2queen.com. You can connect with me there on our website, and you can stay current on all of our insightful advice, our breakthrough advantages, and never miss an episode of Get More Clients by signing up for our weekly news wisdoms, I should say weekly wisdoms newsletter at petite to And next week on get more clients, I'm going to be discussing how to master your networking events and build authority. So I'm going to go right into all the, the bits and pieces on how you can build a great networking event. Now make sure you don't miss a single episode by subscribing to get more clients wherever you get your podcasts. And if you love the show, please share it and give us a five-star review. I would very much appreciate it. Now I will see you next week on Get More Clients.